Hi everyone, this is Rosie, and today we're going to be sewing a fabric basket that folds flat when not in use in any size. So, let's get started. Here is the basket that we will be making in the video. The fold flat method creates a little triangle on one side of the basket. And this basket is completely reversible, so all you have to do is turn the fabric to the other side if you want that triangle to appear on your exterior. The size of the one that we will be making is approximately 7 inches wide by 5 inches high by 5 inches deep. And I sized it to fit fat quarter fabrics. And all you have to do is pull it this way to make it fold flat. And here's another one showing the fabric stored inside the basket. And I have in here some fat quarters, half yards, and one yard cuts. And I will show you the method that I use for folding my fat quarters to fit. I have a fat quarter of fabric here. And this is the width of the fabric. This is the height, so this would be your 18 inches, and this would be the 21 inches. What I do is fold it in half, just like this. And then I fold it in half again. And then I fold each end towards the middle. And the basket that we'll be making in the video is the perfect size for folding it this way. If you have a different method for folding your fat quarters or you just simply want a different size basket, I have a worksheet that I'll go over with you to show you how to make this basket in any size. I have been obsessed with the fold flat method for a very long time and I'd like to share a few past projects with you before we go over the worksheet. This is a little tote bag that folds up into a case so that you can easily drop it into a larger bag when you go shopping. It opens up and the bottom of the tote uses the fold flat method. Next, I have a little gift bag, and I believe I show you how to make this in any size. It has the fold flat bottom, and this one is completely reversible. This one is a little zippered pouch, and on this one, I have the little triangle facing on the outside of the pouch. Then this one here is my favorite. It's my clear view pouch pattern. And it does have the fold flat bottom. I like to store my sock yarn in it. Now all the projects that I've just shown you are free on my website, including the clear view pouch. But the clear view pouch comes in two versions. One is free on my website and the paid version has the pouch in four different sizes. So let's move on to the worksheet. And here's the worksheet that you can use to make the basket in any size. And you can find it in my Facebook group, which is Rosie and David Patterns. It is for use with non-directional fabrics. And as a general rule of thumb, I recommend that the height of the basket is equal to the depth of the basket or greater. And that gives you a well-balanced basket. So for the one that we're making in the video, my finished size is going to be 5 inches deep by 5 inches high by 7 inches wide. So now I want to take these numbers and plug them into the formulas here for your cutting directions. So for the cutting measurement for the width of the basket, you're going to fill in the width of the basket here, which is 7 inches. And then you're going to add to that the depth of the basket, which is 5 plus your seam allowances, and that can be whatever you want. I'm using a half inch, so I'll do one half inch times two, that gives me one inch. So now I add up these measurements, seven plus five is 12, plus one is 13. And that means that I need to cut my fabric pieces 13 inches wide. Then for the height of the basket, you're going to plug in the height of the basket times two. So the height of the basket is five, and five times two is 10. Then you're going to add in the depth of the basket, which is 5, and your seam allowance times 2. So again, 1 half inch times 2 is 1 inch. So you add these up, 
they add up to 16. So that means that I need to cut my fabric pieces 13 inches wide by 16 inches high. You'll cut one piece of fabric for your exterior. So you have 13 wide by 16 high. For the lining, 13 wide by 16 high. And then you need two pieces of woven interfacing, so you're going to cut two pieces that are 13 inches wide by 16 inches high. Now, if you want to use a heavier interfacing, such as Decoville Light or a fusible fleece, you can do that, but you want to change the measurement just a little bit. And I have a note here that says, if using a heavier interfacing, eliminate the measurement for the seam allowance when cutting your interfacing to reduce bulk. So, from the 13, we take off an inch, so that would mean 12 inches wide by 15 inches high. So I just took an inch off of the 13 inches and an inch off of the 16 inches to give me the measurement here for the heavier interfacing. Now if you decide that you don't want to follow my general rule of thumb here and you don't want your basket to be as high as it is deep, the answer is yes, it doesn't have to be as high as deep. But you do have to keep in mind that when you make the basket, you're going to have that little triangle forming on the inside. And however deep your basket is, that triangle is going to come up. The point is going to be half the depth. So the triangle in this basket is coming up two and a half inches from the bottom. And you have to have enough room above that little triangle tip to accommodate the triangle. Well, let's get to the sewing part now. I've already prepared my panels for the basket that we will be making today. This panel here will be used for my exterior and this one will be used for my lining. I'm using 100% cotton quilting fabric for both panels and each panel has already been interfaced with the Pellon SF-101. We're going to start by working with the exterior panel. I've gone ahead and cut them to size according to the worksheet that we just went over. So each one of these panels is 13 inches wide by 16 inches high. The first thing that you want to do is fold the panel in half with the right sides together. Make sure that you're matching up the top and sides. You want everything to be nicely matched. And then you're going to take an iron and press a nice crease into this fold here. Now we want to mark a line up from the fold. And the distance that we're marking up from the fold is going to be one half of the depth of your basket. So my basket is going to be five inches deep, so I want to mark 2.5 inches up from that fold line. And you will mark all the way across the bottom. Now I am using a friction pen here and I only use them for demonstration purposes on videos because while the marks will come out with heat, they can come back with hold. So be very careful if you're using one of these pens. After marking that line, we're going to fold back on the line just like this. You want to make sure that those side edges are nice and even and you're going to press a nice crease where the fold is. Now I want you to flip this over so that the fold is now on your work surface and I want you to put an X on this side of the basket and you'll understand later why we're putting an X there. Next you're going to take your lining piece and you want to fold it in half with right sides together just like you did for the exterior making sure that your top and side edges are all even with each other. And then you want to move down to where the fold is and make a small clip right where that fold is. You want to stay within your seam allowance and the seam allowance will be one half of an inch. So you need to be well within that one half inch mark when you make your clip. And you'll do this to both sides.
Then we're going to mark a line straight across here and we're going to use that little V shape where the cut is to line up our ruler. So take a ruler and line it up right in the point of that V shape and then draw a line straight across. Just like that. Now we need to draw two more lines on the fabric and we're going to be drawing those lines away from the center mark here. So one line will be drawn on this side of that center mark and the other one will be drawn on this side of the center mark. The spacing is going to be one half the depth of your basket. So again, my basket is five inches deep. So going to draw a line that's two and a half inches out from the center on each side of that center line. So I'm just lining up my ruler on that center line right now, two and a half inches away from the center, and I'll mark a line. And then I'll do the same exact thing on this side. So this line and this line should be five inches apart. Now we want to go ahead and create folds on the two lines that we just drew. We're going to ignore the center line. So I'm going to take the lining and fold it right sides together and making sure that my sides are even and I'm going to fold right on that line. And I'm going to iron a nice crease there. Make sure that you're right on the line. And now we can flip this over and we're going to fold on that second line. Again, right sides together and make sure that your side edges are nice and even. And then press a nice crease in that line. Now you want to go ahead and open this up and we want to place those two folds, those two creases together. And I'm just going to clip them in place temporarily. You want to make sure that those folds are nice and even with each other. And after I have them clipped together, I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to see we have another fold here. We just want to go ahead and give that a nice pressing. You can do it from inside too as well if you like. Now we're going to bring back our exterior. And what I want to do next is draw a line one half inch away from the top edges. And this is going to be my stitching line. So the seam allowance will be one half of an inch. And I just like to draw in my stitching line for something that's as small as this. I don't mind doing that. It helps me to be more accurate. We'll do that on both sides. And now I want to bring back my lining. I'm going to lay it down on my work surface with the right side of the fabric facing up. And then I'm going to take the exterior and place it right sides together with the lining. Now if you remember, we marked an X on one side of the exterior. And the reason why is because we want to leave an opening in the seam and we're going to use that opening to turn the basket right side out and the opening needs to be on the side where the X is. So the X is just reminding me to leave an opening there. And it does matter which side you leave your opening. 
So I'm going to clip the top edges together on both sides. I have the top edges clipped in place, so we're ready to go and sew our seams. Just remember to leave your opening on the side where the X is. I'm sewing on a Juki DX4000 QVP, which is also known as the Kokochi. I'll be using a stitch length of 2.6 and a seam allowance of one half of an inch. And I am going to back stitch, and I am starting on the side where the opening is. Now when I get to this mark here, which indicates the beginning of my opening, I'm going to back stitch. And then I'll scoot over to the other side where that second mark is. And once again, I do want to back stitch. And then I'll stitch off to the end and back stitch. And then I can go ahead and sew the seam on the other side and I'll back stitch at both ends. Now you want to go ahead and press your seams open and you want to be careful to stay away from these folds here with your iron. So I just line it up, make sure that I'm not on top of any of those folds. And I'm just going to press the seams open flat. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. Now we want to line up these seams here that'll be along the top of the basket. So line them up. You want to make sure that your seams are perfectly aligned. And then I like to put in a few pins just to hold them in place. We'll do this on both sides. Let's get them nice and lined up. And I'm not pinning right into where the seam line is, I'm pinning to the side of the seam line, into the seam allowance. Okay? So what you should have now are the two top seams clipped together for both the lining and the exterior. On this side I have the exterior with one fold, on this side I have the lining with the two folds in it. I want to take my exterior side and bring it down over the lining. And I'm going to flip it over this way. Now my lining is on top with the two folds and my exterior is on the bottom with the one fold. I'm going to take the top fold on the lining and push it back. That's going to expose the center crease on the lining. We want the fold of the exterior to be sandwiched in between the two folds of the lining. And I want to take the exterior fold and place it right here on top of this fold of the lining. And I want the edge of the fold here to be sitting right on the crease of the fold of the exterior. So I'm just going to place them together, make sure that it's all sitting in there nicely, 
and then you're going to take the exterior and fold it up over that first fold on the lining just like this and the fold on the exterior should be sitting right on that center crease line on the lining. Then you're going to take the second fold of the lining and place it over the fold of the exterior. You want to make sure that these fold lines, these creases, are even with each other. And you're going to clip them together. You just want to go ahead and take a look, make sure that the folds are all nice and even with each other, and you want to make sure that your opening is on the top here. The next thing that I do is clip the sides together, so I'm going to take my finger and put it right there in the top to stretch out that top, and then I'm going to put some clips to hold the sides together. And then you'll do the same thing on this side. I'm going to stretch the sides right at the top there and put in a few clips. And now we're going to sew the sides together with a one half inch seam. I'm going to sew in the first side now and I'm using a stitch length of 3.0 and the seam allowance is one half of an inch. You do want to back stitch really well at both the top and the bottom. Then I'll flip this over and I'll go ahead and sew the second side seam. I've already gone ahead and removed all the clips from the fold. And now what I want to do is trim my corners. So I'm going to take my scissors and just clip a little triangle out of each side, the top and the bottom. Just be careful not to cut into your stitching. Once I make those cuts, I can separate the outer seams here. And I want to trim down the seam in the middle just to reduce some bulk. So I'll trim it about halfway. And then I'll do the same exact thing on the other side. Trim a little triangle out of the bottom and out of the top. And I'm only pulling away the outer seam, so it's just one layer of fabric. So that's the lining and this is the exterior and then go ahead and trim the seams in the middle then after I do that I just go ahead and give everything a nice pressing and you'll do this on both sides
And now we're ready to turn this right side out. So you're going to reach into where your opening is and just start pushing the entire piece through the opening. You'll grab those bottom folds and pull them apart from each other. Same thing on this oh. side. Just like this. You'll go inside and smooth everything out. The only thing left to do is close up this opening and we'll do that with some top stitching. I do like to make sure that I roll those seams out so that the seam line is laying right on top here. And I do go ahead and give that a little bit of a pressing before I top stitch. Then you can clip that opening together and then we'll go over to the sewing machine and finish this up. I'm top stitching about an eighth of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.0. You don't have to back stitch at the beginning. We can take care of that in the end. And I am top stitching from the lining side. When I get back to where I started, I'll go over that previous line of stitching for a little bit and then I'll back stitch. Well, I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you'll give this technique a try. This technique is really my favorite way to box up the bottom of a bag. I would like to thank everybody who has supported me by subscribing to my channel, and liking my videos. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you as one, and I'd love to see you over at my Facebook group, which is Rosie and David Patterns. Thanks for watching.